Hey, and welcome back to another video in the Interactive Shorts video series designed to give you some insights about how to make your class interactive, experiential, or more immersive for your students. Today we're focused on the idea of using games in your class. And by games, we're talking about a range of approaches, technologies. It could even include, you know, using board games or card games like Pictionary, online Jeopardy quizzes, interactive games that uh, maybe mimic some of the approaches of escape rooms or um, technologies of that sort. So we'll look at a variety of different games and this is one of these where I think you have to do quite a bit of investigation on your own just to get a sense of what's out there, the possibilities, how easy these are to use, do they require anything of your students in terms of an account, a sign up, a technology, and also your own sense of comfort with technology in terms of thinking about how much learning and pre-work you're going to have to do on your own end to get this running for your students. So let's jump in now and this will not be an exhaustive list but I'll give you some resources that you could check into and look at online and see if you might be interested in using games in your own classes that provide for a more interactive or experiential approach for your students. I was recently reading this article from the Chronicle of Higher Education called How to Play in the College Classroom in a Pandemic and Why You Should, Seven Ways to Lighten Things Up in a Class that Are Emotionally, Academically, and Pedagogically Sound. And I thought this was really a great article because it talks about how you can use Zoom in interactive ways to engage your students. And some of the reasons here I think are really good. They talk about how play is one of the most natural ways that we learn. And certainly if you read books like Homo Ludens, um, you know, play is really rooted in our evolutionary experience as Homo sapiens. So that is definitely true. Play offers mental breaks from dire news. Um, I think very key as we're all dealing with uh, situations of collective trauma related to violence in the world, political upheaval, uh, related to the pandemic, of course, we all need opportunities to engage outside of work, outside of school, outside of education. So it's a great break from all the uh, terrible news and world events that we've all been dealing with for sure. And I will be sure to share this article here with the video and that way you can check it out and read it um, in a little more depth. But um, a lot of good uh, ideas about how to engage students in terms of uh, classroom activities, snowball discussions, um, class discussion activities that uh, employ a you must choose frame that requires students to um, answer particular questions. You could engage them with this technique using the breakout rooms in Zoom. As I mentioned here, um, on Zoom, movement is tricky, but you could do things like scavenger hunts inside their home, inside their room, if that is appropriate for you. Introduce some lever levity um, in an intro to psych class. The uh, faculty member here talks about um, illustrating observational research methods in fun ways, and so that is something to think about. Be creative and careful as you connect things to current events. Interrupt rut routine. Um, do low stakes grading in your class and know when to take a break. So in thinking about this context of play in a college classroom, I thought in, in particular in this video, I would talk about using games. And there are different types of games that you could use. We've talked a little bit in another video about question cards that you can use as prompts, as icebreakers at a beginning of a class, but you could certainly do it any time in that class just to engage your students a little bit more. In this video, I'll talk about games and games could include physical games that you could maybe play with students if it works in a way that the students don't each have to have a copy of the game. Or we'll talk about some online games that you can use. And I found actually a list of quite a few of these online. And I thought this would be a great way to get your students to engage. And I will have two of these uh, to show you. And we'll actually jump on here um, and I'll do a, a, a screen uh, video capture here. But the first one is distancing without disconnecting Zoom games. And so there are different ways, including using uh, the game Pictionary, which you don't need the actual official board game to do. And there's also a, a video I've done on trivia. And so trivia will also connect to this. So check out that video. And then the second document I'll share with you is someone created an entire list of quarantine games. And this is really massive. Everything from online chess to online card games, collections, you know, specifically for kids. Feel free to use this for your kids as well. Um, massive, massive online player worlds, Dungeons and Dragons, 
murder mystery games, party games, puzzles. You can even f find some low-tech versions of escape rooms. And so some of the stuff that you might use with your class could be just a great way to engage students and to again get the interactivity up a little bit more than it is because of maybe our Zoom fatigue that we're all experiencing. So in the past I've used board games in classes more as a demonstration like in my religion class we talked about this playing gods board game and um, we kind of used it for fun. I originally thought I was going to purchase a bunch of these and then have students play it in the class but Doing a board game in a class takes a little bit of time, so that, that might be hard to do, but a board game could be used for a demonstration, maybe not for an actual activity. The challenge with using a board game in any class is that if you need multiple copies of that game, whether you're in person or on Zoom, that can be really challenging to get students all a copy. So probably not the best option. Now, some games out there, this is a card game where people break into teams. It's called The Resistance. Really fun game that is as I'm losing all the cards here, that allows um, interactivity and uh, people choosing cards. So with some of the card games out there, you might be able to actually use them in a class depending on what those are. So you could even search on Amazon and see if anyone has designed games very specific to doing interactive activities on Zoom. I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of people are coming up with, with new and innovative ideas. Okay, so that will do today here talking about using play and different kind of games, most notably online games that allow you to have a little more fun with your students to break the chain of traditional lecture and hopefully engage them a little bit more than normal here as we continue to teach during the pandemic on Zoom. So thanks for listening and I'll be back with more videos in this interactive shorts video series.